Second Civil War was the first conflict to be widely photographed. Some estimate that as many as one million images were made from 1861 to 1865. Most Civil War era photographers focused almost exclusively on making portraits. Few ventured outside their studios, let alone followed an army to photograph a battlefield. The most sensational images, those showing the dead on the field of battle, were made by a mere handful of dedicated cameramen, men such as Alexander Gardner and Timothy O'Sullivan. They hauled their cumbersome equipment to such faraway battlefields as Antietam, Gettysburg, and Petersburg, where they recorded these powerful images of death and destruction. The disturbing nature of the photographs guaranteed that they would be widely duplicated. Ironically, these famous photos have been largely misidentified, misattributed, and generally misunderstood. would take the efforts of another dedicated professional more than a century later to unravel the mysteries surrounding these images. In 1975, historian William Frazzanito published a book that revolutionized the study of Civil War battlefield photography. Gettysburg, A Journey in Time, was the culmination of a near 20-year odyssey into the research of Civil War photographs. Basically, what I'm dealing with is uh, a, a subject like Gettysburg, photography at Gettysburg, is nobody has ever really studied it before. And the thing that's most different about my research is that uh, traditionally the serious study of the early photograph is dominated by the fine arts field. And these people view the photograph more as a work of art, and historians, on the other hand, view them as illustrations. You'll write a book about Gettysburg, and almost as an afterthought, you'll grab a few photos and throw them in there. Whatever the captions were when you grab the photographs, that's what winds up in the book. I'm really the first person to focus on the, the photograph as a historical document. I'm not as much interested in uh, a particular photographer. I'm interested in the subject. How was Gettysburg photographed? Frasinito's journey began at an early age when, just short of his ninth birthday, this issue of Life magazine arrived in the mail. The date was September 12, 1955. It featured an article on a new surge of interest in the Civil War. Included were a handful of famous images. Frasinito was hooked. He began collecting books on the war and paid visits to several Civil War battlefields. As his interest grew, so did his questions. Where exactly were these photographs taken? And what did the locations look like today? A number of the images of dead at Gettysburg had distinct boulders in them. Descriptions of these photos often listed the names of famous regiments and at least four distinct areas of the battlefield. The wheat field, scene of the charge of the first Minnesota, McPherson's Woods, and the bloody angle on Cemetery Ridge. On a trip to Gettysburg in 1962, Frasinito tried to find the places where the famous photographs were taken by relying on their captions and searching for boulders at those sites which are present in the images. At that time I was being guided by the traditional captions. The, the most important thing I did initially was to realize that these photographs were not taken all over the battlefield. They were taken at one finite site. And, um, I thought initially it would just be a simple question to visit the four traditional sites and just see which one had the boulders and from my own curiosity just to see what it was like there today. But I visited the four traditional sites in 1962 when I was 15 and that's when the puzzle really started getting deep because I visited the four sites and I couldn't find the boulders anywhere and I realized at that point that nobody knew where any of these photographs were taken and that I was probably the only person who realized nobody knew where they were taken. So that began a whole new phase, looking for these specific rocks. How could the captions be wrong? And where were the images actually taken? Frasinito was resolved to find the answers to these and other compelling questions. In 1964, he enrolled at Gettysburg College, 
During summer breaks, he worked as a licensed battlefield guide. Frazzanito roamed the battlefield for countless hours, searching for the boulders that corresponded to the images. He was very methodical in his research. One of his first steps was to separate the photographs by photographer. The books I had available to me, uh, you got the impression that all the Civil War battlefield photographs were taken by either Matthew Brady or one of his assistants. The most important thing I did initially was to realize that there were different series here. So I would break the photographs up into the different series, and when I did that, I began to, well, I realized that there's only one series that includes the bodies. That's Gardner's series. There are no Brady photographs of bodies. So these guys were clearly here at different times. So once you have the photos broken up into series, then I start working with the series, looking for details, time-related items, so I can place that series in a chronological order, and then you, you go back to the site, you try and retrace the photographer's steps, so you have to find out where he was, retrace the steps, and so it's, it's a topical thing, and that's how the new information emerges. But if you're just this was a novel approach. Never before had these photos been differentiated in this way. So I realized by 1962 that all of these dramatic photographs were taken in some obscure field somewhere at Gettysburg, the place where no one dreamed any of the photographs were taken. So when I made the discovery and the various discoveries, it basically for me turned upside down how we knew, how we believed photographers would cover a battlefield like Gettysburg. Frazzanito then divided the images into groups according to their common elements. He realized it through a guy who has his knee bent up in the air, and he saw him in several photographs that were supposedly in different areas of the battlefield. After making that discovery, Bill then set off to look for the sites. As Frazzanito analyzed the images, he began to map the relationships between the various views. He could now use information from several photographs to aid in establishing the location of each cluster. From the maps that I used to show how all the photos were interrelated, I knew what that site was like. I knew how the bodies were configured. I knew that if you looked in this direction, you're going to see open fields. In this direction, you're going to see a dense woods. So I was intimately familiar with the site as it was in 1863. And I guess I was kind of thinking that it was going to look very much like it did in 1863. William Frazzanito was now on his way to unlocking the mysteries of the death studies at Gettysburg. But it would still take him several more years of searching. At the time of the battle in July 1863, the rural town of Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, was surrounded by rolling countryside, dotted with many small farms, and crisscrossed with patches of woodland. Rocks and boulders were scattered sparsely about various portions of the 25 square mile battlefield. The vast majority of soldiers who fought and died at Gettysburg did so in the fields and woods but it was the limited number of men who died on or near large boulders who garnered most of the attention of Civil War photographers. We're fortunate that there's so many rocks on this part of the battlefield. Most parts of this battlefield don't have rocks on them, and it happens to be the most photographed spots, the Rose Farm, Devil's Den, Little Round Top, happen to run through what's called the Gettysburg Sill, and this sill runs diagonally from Culp's Hill to Little Round Top in this fashion. And that's why we have, happen to have the ability to line up these photographs based on the rocks. These rocks, too large to move and too hardy to erode, were the key to Frazzanito's search. He also studied the tree lines and horizons. The terrain in Gettysburg has changed dramatically over the course of 135 years. Uh, one of the serious problems we have at Gettysburg is we have hundreds of acres that were fields at the time of the battle. Adams County was an agricultural area. And today, partly because it's a national park, the agricultural ground is now wooded. So we have hundreds of acres of woods where fields once were. These changes in the tree lines were the source of much confusion. One of the rocks Brazanita went searching for had a characteristic split in it. In 1966, while searching the southwestern corner of woods in an area of the battlefield known as the Rose Farm, he ran across a boulder that matched it. 
but because he was standing in a grove of trees, he didn't immediately appreciate what he had found. I was looking for a rock that was just outside of the woods, and um, and there's all kinds of illusions too when you're dealing with these photographs. As I say, when I saw these rocks, I said, wow, there's too many, they're too enclosed, this can't be the site. Plus, I was thrown off by the fact that you're on the uh, verge of a hillside here. And from the photographs, I was looking for a fairly flat spot. The significance of the discovery would elude Frazzanito for nearly a full year. On February 1st, 1967, he was on another search in a different part of the battlefield when he made his first significant find. He had been searching for a certain large boulder whose bottom third had been split off. This rock was the key to identifying a whole series of images labeled Slaughter Pen, Foot of Round Top. Frazzanito found the rock deep in the woods at the western base of a large hill known as Big Round Top. What was depicted in the photographs as an open rocky slope had become completely overgrown. The term slaughter pen was not a common phrase. It had long been thought to refer to an area at the base of a smaller hill known as Little Round Top, whose rocky western slope has always remained open. Now, thanks to Frazzanito's tireless efforts, the true location of the slaughter pen was revealed. Based on what he had learned in the slaughter pen, Frazzanito revisited the woods on the Rose Farm. This time, however, he concentrated on horizons. It was then he recognized the significance of the split rock he had discovered a year earlier. The way I actually discovered it was um, on March 10th of 67, I was working with the distance shots that showed the distant ridges. I figured that the distant ridges, that there were only a finite number of ridges on the battlefield, and I had eliminated everything else on the battlefield except the southern extension of Seminary Ridge. And I had a hypothetical camera angle in mind, and I just turned around 180 degrees and started walking through fields and woods to see where it would lead me. I parked my car down by the Bushman farm lane and walked through the fields, walked through the pine forest, and I, I came in from about this angle. And it took me right back to this split rock, and then the next year from the different approach led me right back here, and that day I had my photographs with me, and everything fit in. That was the key to the ultimate discovery, after five years of field work. I was elated. It was, uh, it was quite exciting. The identification of the Rose Farm as the site of some of the most dramatic death studies recorded at Gettysburg was a thrilling revelation. This site was always an obscure part of the battlefield. Historians have not uh, actually paid much attention to this fight that produced these casualties. Nobody realized that there were that many casualties, that the fighting was that intensive on this portion of the Rose Farm. And by discovering the site of the photographs, I've discovered that there was an intensive fight here. And it's one of uh, many black holes in the story of the Battle of Gettysburg. The fact that so many bodies laid out for burial in the photographs had fallen on the southwestern corner of the Rosewoods, focused attention on this forgotten field and the men who had perished on it. On July 2nd, 1863, about 25,000 soldiers fought on the Rose Farm tract. During the fighting, these soldiers incurred about 9,000 casualties all after 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Now, a lot of historians talk about the wheat field being the bloodiest spot in the Civil War, or the cornfield, or the angle at Spotsylvania. But the Rose Farm, without a doubt, for one single piece of property, is the bloodiest farm in all of American history. Very little is known about the soldiers pictured, except that they are Confederates. I cannot tell you who those people are, and nobody can. Part of that is a lot of people died at the Battle of Gettysburg, especially the people who were to write these reports. I would say it's most likely some Georgians under a guy named General Sims, who died. Or some South Carolinians under Joseph B. Kershaw. When you study 